friends welcome to 20 fingers two brains this is part 13 of online shopping cart project in this part we are going to discuss the coding for highlighting the added products and binding the products to the my cart so let's run this website whenever a customer or user clicks on add to cart that particular product is added to the cart and also it is highlighted with a green color and when you click on it again and again the counter is not incremented because the product is already added to the cart so we are going to discuss how this product is getting highlighted after that we will discuss how when we click on the car on the shopping cart counter uh, we get all the products which are there in the shopping cart this also we are going to discuss so let's put a break point Okay, when user clicks on add to cart, the BTN add to cart event is getting fired. Then we have the product ID as one, product quantity, the available stock is ten. Now we are adding the first product to the cart. So we get the information about that particular product, which is like Dell laptop. price image url category and the quantity we add that information to the session same information we are passing it to the session now the session is active the counter is incremented by one when we click again click on add to cart the second product is getting added this time the session is not null so the if part will get executed we will check whether the product the product exit exist or not so here the count is zero it so it doesn't exist so we have we have added two products in the shopping cart now at the end when we click on add to cart we have a method highlight cart products so this method gets called for highlighting the added products in this method what we are doing is first we are checking whether the session is not equal to null here the session is not null because we already have three products added to the shopping cart then we are converting this session to dt products added to cart so this data table will contain all the products which are added to cart now we what we will do is we have data list in this data list we have data list items so we have 1 2 3 data list item so for each data list item we are going to loop through so this for each loop will execute three times so as we have discussed in our previous videos we have added a hidden field so from this data list item we will get the value of that hidden field and we will check whether that hidden field is there is there we will get the value of that hidden field so here we are getting the hidden field value the value is 1 that is the product id and we will check the product id with all the products all the we will check the value of the product field a hidden field value with the product id column of the data table so in the data table we have the product id column so we will go through it and we'll check if the product id is there so if the product id which which is there in the data table the same is there in the hidden field it will go inside this loop inside this if part then from the item the item is nothing but the data list item the data list item we will find the button and we will provide some color to it so what we are doing is we are changing the text of that button how we are finding the button we are finding the button using the find control method of the item the item is nothing but the data list item the data we are having all the data list item 
and also what we will do is we will find an image img star which we have added in the database and that we will set the visibility of that image to true so this is how this loop will get executed for all the products and finally it will highlight all the products which are added to the shopping cart so this is how we are highlighting the uh, products which are there and this highlight product uh, highlight cart products we are calling from more than one places another place is whenever we are clicking on this logo we are calling the highlight cart products highlight cart products because we want to highlight all the products which are already added to cart the next location is whenever we are adding the product to cart after adding the product to cart we are highlighting that cart product so we have first at this location then on the logo click also we are counting uh, highlighting the products when we click on the category suppose the user clicks on laptop so out of two laptops one laptop is already added to cart so it is highlighted using this highlight cart products method so this method we are calling from three places okay so let's move to our next part we have already discussed how we are adding the products to cart how we are highlighting this product how we are getting the stock and how we are binding this category now when user clicks on the shopping cart counter it is directed to a new view where the user can select the number of items he wants for a particular product and also he can remove the product from the cart so here we are going to discuss how we are binding this details which are selected by the user to the shopping cart so where the user clicks on this counter so here we have the counter so here we have the counter when user click on this counter it's a link button so what we have this is the method btn shopping cart click so what we do we call a method get my cart and after getting my cart we change the text of the category name and the products the products name is turned to customer details and the category name is turned to products in your shopping cart so products in your shopping cart and customer detail before this we call the method get my cart so this method is very important this method actually displays all the products which are there into the sh shopping cart where user can select the uh, increase the number of items and also user can remove the product from the cart so here we declare a data table dd products and we check whether the session is null or not if the session is not null then we convert that session to the data table and assign all the values from the session inside the dt products if the session is null then we create a new data table simply assign a memory to the dt products after that what we do after that we check whether dt products row dot count is greater than 0 if the row dot count is greater than 0 that means whatever value dt product has got from the session those values are having some records and that values will be displayed and if it if the count is less than 0 that means the dt ses session my cart is empty and dt product doesn't contain any records so in the else part what we do we display pnl empty cart as we have done let me show you so when the use in the shopping cart is empty we get a message your shopping cart is empty so it goes in the else part when user clicks on the logo we get, create a data table the session is null we go in the else part and the dt products is empty if it is empty it, it will go in the else part in the else part what we do we simply set the visibility of pnl empty cart as true and rest all panels like my cart checkout uh 
this is PNL categories, PNL products. This is my uh, here we have this my card, this customer details. All these panels visibility is set to false, and orders all the panels visibility is set to false. Only panel visible is PNL empty card. And what we do, the DL card products data source is set to null. The total products is text is zero and uh, total price is also zero and the BTM shopping heart text is also zero. So this text is also zero and the total price, the total product, everything is turned out to be zero. If the code, if at all DT product contains some rows, that means the user has added some products in the shopping cart. So in that case, what we do, we change the total products text to the number of products in the shopping cart and btn shopping heart text to number of rows oh, let me show you so in that case we change this to the number of products in the shopping cart and this is one this is one so here we assign it to this both field are assigned as one one then we set the date DL products data source equal to DT products. This DT product will contain all the information which is required in, to be binded to DL card products. Then we simply bind it. And again, we decide the visibility. In this case, if some item is available, only two things are visible. One is the customer detail panel and another one is my card. So in that case, my card and PNL checkout form, both visibility are turned true. Rest all panels visible are false. In between this, we call a method update total bill. This we will discuss now. But this DL update total bill, we have a method update total bill. The update total bill will simply so what we have done is here we have bind the entire DT products to the data list, and after that we are calling the update total bill method. In the update total bill, what we do is we we'll look through all the data list items. For example, in this case, only two items are added. So for it will loop two times. So for the first item and then for the second item. So for first item, first we will get the price label. We have a price LBL price. So this is the LBL label price. It will get it. Then it will get the product quantity. The product quantity is nothing but this one. Then we get the product price. The product price is nothing but the price label into the product quantity. Suppose user wants to buy two piece of this one. So here I write two. So the automatically told the bill num a bill is getting updated. So we get the price label, product quantity and the total price. Then we do the product price. Then we do the total price. Total price initially is set to zero and total product products is also set to zero. Then the total price equal to total price that is zero plus the product of price of the product. So this loop will rotate the number of items which are there in the DL pro card products and it will update the total. Finally, in both the text box, we are putting the values of total price and total product and converting them to string. So this gets updated. Also, we have discussed the update bill method. The another thing that we are doing is So this is the form and we bind all the name, image URL, available stock, all these details are available in the session and we bind it and this txt product quantity, this is having a txt product quantity change event. So that change event, whenever it is fired. Whenever it is fired, we are need to again update the product bill. Suppose I am changing the product quantity from 2 to 3. So if we see this, it increased by 4 and the product, product price is also increased. So this is this event, the TXT product change event is getting fired. So in our next video, we will discuss about how the products from the shopping cart are getting removed and how we are calculating the product quantity and total price when 
whenever the user is changing the number of items in the product list so this was part 9 part 13 sorry of online shopping cart in our next video we will discuss the removal of products from the shopping cart and also we will submit the customer details so thank you for watching this video you can let us your feedback about our tutorials as a comment or also you can share your feedback on our facebook page the facebook page and the youtube channel and also our blog are mentioned in this video and again thank you for watching this video have a nice day